Hello, hello. Happy Thursday, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. If you have the ability to turn your camera on, would love to see your beautiful faces. Hello, Miss Harrington. Hello, Miss Smith. Nice to see you. Miss Smith, you do a lot of traveling. I feel like you're in the car a lot on these things. <laughs> going to and from those of you that are driving please pay attention to the road we are going over some number stuff today um so if you can't take notes obviously we'll get the replay out also get you guys access to the slides i think this is a huge missing puzzle piece in not just martial arts schools but businesses in general I work with other businesses outside of the martial arts industry and this, uh, you know, kind of puzzle piece of a weekly meeting can really make or break the success of that meeting. And, you know, anytime somebody tells me that they, they don't like meetings, they don't like being in meetings to me, it's just because the meeting isn't being ran to the best of its ability. Um, I absolutely look forward to our meetings in my companies. And uh, it's because we have a very specific process that helps to keep it on track. I think often in our meetings, side tangents and side quests and side conversations uh, can completely derail the purpose of the meeting. So we're going to go over the structure of the meeting and, and really put a lot of time and energy and focus on the numbers aspect, because I always say math is the path. Um, so I just kind of want you to think real quick, and I know we got people driving and stuff like that, but how, how many of you are having a weekly meeting with your team, or if you're a one man or one woman show, you're having it with yourself? Just like show of hands, who's doing a weekly meeting? Okay, so a handful of you, great. Um, the next question I want you to ask yourself is who's involved in that? weekly meeting. And I want to make sure that when I say meeting, that that doesn't get confused with a training because I, I separate those two. So at Gracie Pack, we have our Monday weekly meeting, which is where we're going over, uh, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, the numbers. And, and that's what we're going to walk through today. But on Thursdays, we do a training and that's to train on specific skills that we want the instructor to level up on. And we want the front desk team to level up on. And for us, we separate it. I know I have a client that they do them back to back on Monday just because uh, with the team that they've hired, they kind of hired for convenience instead of hiring for a career. Very difficult to get them all in the school at one time, uh, you know, for the meeting and the training. So they go back to back. But I want to make sure that we understand that I believe those are two separate things. One is for an overview of where the business is at and where we want it to go. And the other is to develop skills. And you need to have both of these on your calendar on a weekly basis. Um, we had our Maya Elite group coaching call on Tuesday, and we have all of our Maya clients fill out a form that basically lets us know, like, what was your gross revenue? What's your active count at? What are your wins? And what are your challenges? And I saw multiple submissions on motivating and inspiring staff. Um, and it wasn't just like one or two people. It was multiple people that were struggling with this. And, you know, my first question is like, well, show me your calendar. One of my favorite quotes, show me your calendar and show me your bank account and I'll show you your priorities. And if I looked at that school's calendar and I'm not seeing things on that calendar that would help to inspire and motivate their team, whether that's being on Zoom calls like this, whether that's staff training, whether it's on the mat or off the mat, whether it's sending your team to you know conferences like the Mayacon conference that we have coming up, then it's not a priority and it would make sense to why you're struggling with that, okay? So- Thank you for hopping on today. Over the next 45 minutes, we're going to talk about your scorecard, okay? And your scorecard is just what, it's the language that we use 
um, when we are talking about the numbers in the business. So we're going to talk about how you can develop a scorecard, which will really help you motivate your team. And also you have metrics to hold yourself and then accountable to hitting your goals. I think a, a big struggle for a leader or a manager is holding the team accountable. And this is something that you can implement that will help you do that. So we're going to talk about the wrong way to run the meeting and uh, go through a scorecard or go through your numbers. We'll go through the steps of effectively running a meeting. We'll build the scorecard. I'll give you a couple of different options with how you can track this and then what to do if something is off. Like, okay, this number is not where it's supposed to be. So what are the next steps? And then I I'm going to give you four, I think it's four action steps to get this implemented into your school. So as always, please be present, participate, ask questions, and most importantly, execute. Man, I saw this. I'm going to stop the screen share. That's, that's how impactful that it was. I saw this on social media today, and I loved it. Um, it says, if you're lost, the answer is education. All right. So maybe you guys feel lost on like how to run, you know, the scorecard aspect of your meeting. So you're here for the education, right? If you're educated, the answer is execution. So now that I'm going to educate you, what do you got to go do? You got to go execute. If you're executing, the answer is consistency. That is good. If you're lost, the answer is education. If you're educated, the answer is execution. If you're executing, the answer is consistency. I just, I saw it today. I screenshot it, thought it was super, super impactful. So let's go ahead and get educated. So if you are not currently hitting the goals that you have for your martial arts school, one, I hope you have set goals. We typically like to set those at the beginning of the year so we can break them down on a quarterly basis and then from a quarterly basis, we can break it down to a monthly basis. But if you have those goals and you're not currently hitting them, I believe it's because you need to, one, make sure you're measuring them consistently and to get feedback, okay? We have to have a feedback loop so that we can course correct. What typically happens, and, and this is what I see in, in pretty much most businesses that run meetings, is in their meetings, there is no consistent tracking occurring, and it's not prepared at the start of the meeting. So let's say you wanted to know how much revenue came in from merchandise, or you wanted to know how many upgrade nominations went out, or you wanted to know how many people renewed. What often happens is we wait until the meeting, we ask those questions, and then you have to go search for the information, which is just a complete waste of everybody's time. So I, I typically see no consistent tracking occurring and also like the, the, the prepping of having those numbers tracked prior to the meeting started. Another thing that I, I see happen is that we're just tracking like every single number. And that is going to really draw out a meeting as well. And typically, when we are talking about numbers, if something is off, we go on a side tangent. So let's say, um, you know, you are looking at your lead count and you want to be at 20 leads per week. I'm just throwing out a random number, okay? And the week has gone by and you're only at 12. And as you're going through the numbers and you have a ton of other numbers that you need to go through, you guys typically will get into back and forth with the team members or maybe it's you and, your, and, and a partner and you'll be going bouncing back and forth about why that happened. And it typically will eat up a ton of time in the meeting. And then you don't get to the rest of the items that you want to do. So these side tangents occur and it feels like there's just, there's no progress made in those meetings. So this is kind of what I typically see happen when it comes to the numbers aspect of the meeting. So what my recommendation is, and if you've been following me for some time, I'm sure you've heard me talk about EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System, made famous by Traction, the book Traction by Gino Wickman. Um, guys, I've, I've used a lot of different meeting agendas, 
And for this type of meeting where we're doing an overview of where the business is at, where we want it to go, it's a week-to-week rhythm. I don't believe there is a better option out there than this level 10 meeting. It's called a level 10 because at the end, you rate the meeting on a one to 10, which gives you the feedback loop of how your team is perceiving these meetings. So I'm going to quickly, because I've done trainings on this, I'm going to quickly go through these line by line. And then what we're focusing on today is the scorecard. Okay. So the way a level 10 meeting works is we would typically have our full-time team members on our meeting in our martial arts school. So that is our program director. She's full-time. Our chief instructor, he's full-time. And our senior instructor is also full-time. We have assistant instructors that are part-time assistant instructors. They are not a part of this particular meeting. They have their meetings before classes start, just a stand-up meeting to get them on the same page and also to cascade any messages that they might need. But these are our full-time team members that are going to join us for this. I always recommend this is done on a Monday or a Tuesday. No later than a Tuesday, this should be occurring. And we start with a check-in, which is just good news, personal good news and business win. I think a lot of people think this is a waste of time, and I'm telling you, it's not a waste of time. It's an investment of time. Each one of these sections is only five minutes with the exception of the IDS. That is a longer portion. So it's not that we're sitting here and we're giving play-by-plays about our weekend. We're just saying giving one personal piece of good news and one business win. Why do we do this? because it helps to reframe anybody's mindset that might not be in a great mood. It also allows your team to learn and connect with each other on what they are experiencing in their personal life, okay? Don't be clinical in these meetings. Make sure that you are building an opportunity for connection. So we start with the check-in. Then we go to the scorecard review, and that's what we're really gonna be breaking down today. And it's only five minutes. And you might be thinking, Chris, there's, you know, like a lot of numbers we're going to go through. Like, how is that only five minutes? I'm going to show you. But this is where we review all of the major KPIs that we have decided we want to have a pulse on on a weekly basis. Then we go to rocks. These are our 90-day projects. We're just asking, are we on track? Are we off track? Next up is headlines. That's the good, the bad, and the ugly. So these are headlines about your students, the parents, your team members. It could be, you know, Mrs. Johnson left us a five-star Google review. It could be, you know, Mr. Smith um, broke his leg when he was playing pickleball. I think maybe we should, you know, send him a gift. So just headlines that we think would be great for everybody on the team to know. And it's not only about your customers, but also about your team members, okay? Um, Great place, like if somebody's gonna be out, you know, like, hey, Brandon's gonna be out on Thursday, he's got PTO, that would be a headline, okay? And only five minutes. The to-dos are the actions that we committed to from the previous meeting. How often does this happen? You have a meeting and there are things that need to be done after the meeting. And then they just forget to do that. When you have a specific point in your agenda where you are reviewing the action steps for the previous week and your team in front of their peers is going to be asked, did you finish X, Y, Z? They're going to have that peer pressure to make sure that it gets done. So a to-do is anything that we give a team member that needs to be done in the next seven days. And it's coming from the previous meeting. And then the bulk of the meeting is the IDS issues list. So IDS means we identify the issue, we discuss the issue, and we solve the issue. And this is going to be about 30 minutes if you're doing an hour-long meeting. Now, what goes on the issues list? Well, any challenges that you're currently having in the company, any ideas And then anything that was off track from the scorecard, the rocks, the headlines, and the to-dos. So when you're going through your scorecard, and let's say your goal was to have 20 leads each week and you're only at 13, that means it's off track. We're not going to discuss it. 
when we're at the scorecard. What we're going to do is we use a phrase called drop it down. And what we will do is we'll take lead count and we'll drop it down to the issues list. Now, let's say your uh, upgrade nomination number, you're aiming to nominate three students every single week and you're at zero so far for the week. That means it's off track. We're not going to discuss about why it's off track when we're going through the scorecard. We're going to drop it down to the issues list. We do this with rocks if people are off track with their projects. Any headlines, maybe we got a one-star Google review and you know this person is, is slandering us online. We're not discussing it then. We're going to drop it down to the issues list. And then when we get to the issues list, we prioritize that issues list. <laughs> Just going to go ahead and mute everybody here. We prioritize the items on the issues list of what is the most important issue we need to tackle today. When we first started this, we had like over 60 or 70 issues on that list. You're not going to tackle every single one if you have that many. Some weeks, there's only a handful of issues that are on there. But we vote what's the number one priority issue that we want to do. And then we go to the next one and the next one and the next one for 30 minutes and see how many we can get through. We identify what the issue is, we discuss it, and then we solve it. And oftentimes, in order to solve the issue, there is a to-do that comes out of it. Remember, a to-do is an action that you have seven days to complete. So the next time we sit down, that to-do is going to be right here. And we're going to ask, Anna, did you get X, Y, and Z done from the previous meeting? And this is how you ensure that your meetings stay on track and that the action steps that come out of the meeting, people are held accountable to finishing it. The last part is we conclude. Whatever the to-dos were from the meeting, we're going to review it. All right, Chris, you have this. Anna, you have this. Derek, you have this. Then any cascading messages. Sometimes in these meetings, news that we need to cascade down to a level three instructor or a level two instructor or part-time front desk help is going to come out of that meeting. So we're going to highlight, are there any cascading messages that came out of this meeting that we need to make sure other people on the team are aware of? And then finally, we rate it. And we're going to rate it on a scale of one to 10. One, this was a complete waste of time. It should have been an email. 10, I'm clear. This was efficient. We're ready to rock and roll. Anything under an eight, we ask the person how we could have made the meeting better. It's a feedback loop, and you can't take it personal. If they thought the meeting was a six, well, let us know why. Maybe because the meeting went 30 minutes over. That could be a legit reason. This is what I believe is the absolute best framework for operating your weekly meeting. Now, what I will say is in the issues list, the one thing that we tweaked is there are some ongoing items that we want to have a pulse on. For instance, the nomination list, um, the renewal list, the missing an action list. So we keep those as issues, and it's something that we touch on when we get to the issues list every single week. We just label it as an ongoing issue. Um, and that has been really helpful to ensure that we are looking at those lists every single week, okay? So now that we kind of understand the framework of how the meeting goes, and we talked about the drop it down concept, right? If a scorecard measurable is off track, and we just call that like a red number, uh, green is good, red is not good, we do not discuss it when we're, when we're at the scorecard section of the agenda, we drop it down to the issues list. And this is going to ensure that there aren't any side tangents that are occurring that completely derail you from your agenda. Okay. So let's talk about building this scorecard. And, and hopefully you already have some numbers that you are looking at on a weekly basis. And I'm going to give you the exact numbers that we look at. Um, and, you know, I'll give you some kind of like ideation as well as potential numbers that you can track. 
But the purpose of creating this is so that we have a handful of numbers that give us command of our business. I look at my scorecard kind of like I look at the dashboard of my car, okay? When the red light goes off on the dashboard of the car, usually that means there is something wrong. You need that as well in your business. And the other aspect of the scorecard is so that we can focus on the weekly activities that we need to be implementing to be successful, which allows us to hold people accountable. Your scorecard is ultimately the overall health of your company, okay? Um, a really great, um, you know, kind of example of this is if you were on vacation on a, you know, private island and you were delivered a sheet of paper once a week, what numbers that your business sent you, what numbers would you want on that sheet of paper for you to be able to make good decisions and give feedback to your team on what the focus needs to be. Those are the numbers that should encompass your scorecard. And again, it's a subset of numbers. We don't want all the numbers, just the key metrics that you need to give you command of your business. Think of kind of like a control panel of an airplane. There are thousands of moving parts and hundreds of data points. But when you are first learning to fly, they teach you that there are six main gauges that you need to keep your eyes on at all times. And if I got anybody that's a pilot in here, I'm sure you know what this is called. This is referred to as the six pack, okay? At a glance, these six instruments will provide the pilot with the information that they need to have a successful flight. There's things like airspeed, uh, altitude, heading indicator, vertical speed indicator. This is the main focus that they need to have in order to make sure that the plane doesn't crash. And at a glance, they can look at it, okay? This is what we are looking for when we are building our scorecard in our school. The same way that these gauges could indicate that there is something wrong, our scorecard in our level 10 meeting can indicate there's something wrong in our business. And if there is, then you can go and you can pull additional data points so you can get a really clear picture of what's happening. And that's what we're going to apply, the same concept of the six-pack to your school's scoreboard, okay? And uh, I personally suggest doing this as a team. I think you're going to get more buy-in if you do it together as opposed to you just presenting this to your team and saying, all right, these are the you know six numbers I want you tracking. These are the eight numbers I want you tracking. And these are the five numbers I want you tracking. So I suggest doing this as a team. But your first step is just to identify what are the key indicators that show success in your school? For those of you that have the ability to type in the chat, can you give me one? Like, what's one number that if I had that number, I would be able to identify how successful or not successful we are doing in that area? All right, Miss Melissa, attrition. Yes, and I know that's been a huge focus for Miss Melissa because her attrition was a lot higher than she wanted it and she cut it more in half because what you focus on expands okay if you want to improve your attrition you better be looking at what your attrition rate is on a weekly basis I see student count in here which is great um, I see retention new leads yield per member so uh, we typically call that student value, right? So the amount that each member is worth. And in order to find that, you could just take your total gross revenue and divide it by your active count, new enrollments. I love it. All right, you guys are picking up what I am dropping down. Very good. So what you'll do with your team is you're going to ask them this question, okay? And the front desk team is probably going to have different numbers than your instructor team. If I'm an instructor, the numbers that are important for me to know if success is occurring on the mat 
would be number of people that upgraded. It would be our attendance count on a day-to-day -day basis. It would be our student count versus our active count. And those are two different numbers, guys. You might have 200 students, but in the last week, maybe only 120 of them showed up. That's what we call the active count. And we don't want to have a big discrepancy from the number of people that are on the books versus the number of people that are ultimately showing up to class. Because if they're not showing up to class, what's going to happen? Credit cards are going to start going delinquent, right? So that's an example of another number. So you're going to get with your team. And again, the instructors are going to probably have different metrics that they're going to measure success than um, you know, your program director. Sniper chats is another metric that we um, track for our instructors. What's a sniper chat? It's just a one-on-one -on -one quick 30 to 60 second talk that our instructors do after a class to build rapport with the parents, okay? So you're going to ask your team, what are the 10 most important KPIs to know if the company is on track? We're just going to start identifying, okay? Then once we've all identified, and, you know, depending if you got five people on the team, you might have 50, you know, 50 items on the list. What we're going to do then is refine the list. We're going to decide which ones can we combine because I'm sure there's going to be overlap, right? Hopefully everybody on there has total gross revenue. And if you don't do open books, then maybe you don't have total gross revenue. We've always done open books. I want my team to know what the clear target is so they know what the revenue is, our full-time team members, not our part-time team members. But you'll combine all the ones that everybody had, and then you'll decide which ones are we going to keep and which ones are we going to kill. Because again, we're not trying to have 40 items on the scorecard, okay? I think we have about 15 is the number that we're around, okay? And then once you refine the list, then you are going to create your quote-unquote six-pack. Now, don't get you know caught up on the word six. You should have more than six items. And when you are refining the list, the question is, is, is that number mission critical? Is that number, if I was on a deserted island and I'm only going to get one printout of the KPIs in my school, I would want that number to take a spot on that sheet of paper, okay? We'll also, you know, see if there's any redundancies. And then once we refine the list, we're going to go through it and we're going to ask everybody, did we miss anything on this list, okay? Once you have the list, you are then going to set the goal for each of the items. And this is where we measure. So if you have leads, how many leads have come in, there's going to be a measurable goal that you are going to break down. And let's say your goal is that you want to have 100 leads a month. Well, if we broke that down week by week by week, that means we need to be aiming for 25 leads a week. And you're going to measure and decide what is the weekly number that we need to hit in order for the total monthly number goal to occur. Now, maybe you haven't been tracking some of the data that you want to start tracking. Maybe you haven't been tracking uh, attendance the way that you should be. Maybe you haven't been tracking uh, nominations. Just take an educated guess because you can adjust this once you start getting in the rhythm of doing these level 10 meetings and you're starting to consistently see data come in, you can adjust that measurable. And it's something that we adjust on a quarterly basis depending on where the school is at. The other question you want to make sure you do, and this is with any goal, is that is it realistic and obtainable, right? Is it, of course, we all want more new students, but... If you just, if you've been averaging 12 new students a month, is it realistic for you to say, hey, we want to try and triple that to like 50 students a month? Not realistic, okay? And I'm always a fan of a minimum of a 10% increase. If my business was a, you know, publicly traded company at a minimum, I would want that return to be 10%. So that's kind of a good baseline if you're trying to, do a little bit of a stretch goal, okay? Now, if you have done one-year plans, you got to ask yourself, is 
the measurable that we chose, is that going to help us get closer to the one-year plan? Because the answer is, is that it should. So we're going to go line by line by line. And maybe like you start with the traffic stats, how many leads came in, how many appointments uh, you know, are we aiming to book, how many shows, and how many closes. And for each one of those, we're going to say, okay, leads, we're aiming for 20 leads. Um, appointments, we're aiming for 10 appointments. Shows, we're aiming for eight shows. Closes, we're aiming for seven closes. And if you kind of do the math, that would be in line with a specific percentage. I'm always a fan of a minimum of my leads, especially if they're coming from social media, 50% to convert. If you have leads that are from, you know, uh, like a face-to-face -face marketing campaign, referral leads, the conversion should be much higher on those. But I want a minimum of 50% of my leads to convert to appointments. I want at least 80% of them showing. And then I want at least closing 80%. So if you know what those percentages are, you can reverse engineer what the measurable is that you're going to aim for, that number that you are shooting for. And then we're going to ask everybody on the team, are we in agreement? And again, don't think that it's written in stone, especially if you haven't been consistent with tracking these numbers, you're going to get data. And from that data, you can make a data-driven decision and maybe tweak and adjust what the measurable is, okay? Once you have decided that, the last part of this is who is going to be held accountable for that number. You need to assign an owner, okay? That owner is responsible for having the KPI ready for the meeting so that when we ask how many leads came in, they don't need to say, oh, let me log into Spark and check. No, that number should be readily available. And we're going to talk about ways that you can track this in a minute, okay? and they are held accountable and responsible for keeping that number on track. That doesn't mean other people aren't involved in that process. So for example, let's say one of the scorecard measurables you're looking at are upgrade nominations, and the chief instructor is held responsible and accountable, but the senior instructor is involved, and so is the program director. You just have to assign the number to an owner. They're responsible for having that number ready, and they're also held responsible for keeping it on track, but that doesn't mean that there aren't other people involved in the process of making it successful, okay? Once we have done those four things, right? We identified the KPIs that we want on the scorecard. We refined our list. We combined some of them. We see if there's any redundancies. We decide which one we're going to kill and which ones we're going to keep. We've set the measurable. This is the number that we are aiming for. This is the target. This is the bullseye. And then we assign accountability. Then you got to figure out how are you going to track it? And when you track this, when you are building out the scorecard, my recommendation, I mean, the easiest thing to do and the most cost-effective thing to do is just use a Google feed, okay? And you can run this level 10 meeting on a Google Sheet. And you can build your Google, uh, your scorecard inside of a Google Sheet as well. So if I, let's say, were going to do that and I wanted to build my scorecard inside of a Google Sheet, I'm just gonna plug these into each one of the boxes. So. Who is held responsible for that particular um, measurable, okay? Then, what is the name of the measurable? What is our weekly goal? What is the date? And the date, I like using the columns. So it would be, if it was this for this week, um, this week, eight, seven, six, was five, six, two, five, eleven. Then we're going to put the unit of how are we tracking this? Is it a dollar sign? Is it a number? Is it a percentage? And then if you want, this, this isn't something you have to put on there, but the source, which is where the data uh, can ultimately be collected from, right? Where does that data come from? So maybe that data is in another spreadsheet. Maybe that data is in your CRM. Maybe that data is in uh, an email. 
that you get, okay? So let's say I was responsible for the number of leads that we are aiming for each week, which would be 20, which is a number. It's not a dollar sign. It's not a percentage. And the source that I'm going to get that from is our CRM. And what you can do on a week-to-week -week basis is track this inside of the spreadsheet. Now, spreadsheets are free, which is great. But there are other uh, platforms out there that you can also track through. And you can do the Google Sheet. There is EOS software. So like the entrepreneurial operating system, they actually have a software system. There's quite a few of them out there. Um, EOS1.com is one of them. That's the one that we use. 90.io. Um, so the word 90.io um, is another one. But inside of these platforms, it will house everything that you need to have a successful meeting. So this is our EOS uh, one platform here. And you can see we have the scorecards over here. And these are this is our actual scorecard that we are uh, utilizing and we can plug in the data points directly in here. So as you can see, it keeps everything really, really tight. Um, it keeps all of our rocks, our headlines, our to-dos, our issues, um, everything. And, and you can actually run the meeting in here and it'll keep meeting notes for you. This is the absolute best way to operate this. But if something is typically the best way to operate it, what does that mean? It's going to cost you money. Um, I believe EOS is $10 per person. So the free way is just to use a Google Sheet, Okay. Uh, the paid way is that there is EOS software out there, or you can build it inside of a project management platform. I have a couple of GrowPro clients that operate on EOS. One of them um, uses ClickUp, and ClickUp is kind of similar to like Trello and Monday and Teamwork, which are these project management softwares, and you can house all of the information inside, okay? You got to have some place that this is living and a document that everybody has access to so they can input their numbers prior to the meeting so you can have a successful and efficient meeting. So what are some of the numbers that we personally track for? I wanted to literally like these, these are the exact numbers on our scorecard. We start with the traffic stats, which are the number of leads, appointments, shows, and closes, and also number of trials. So we offer a free one-on-one -on -one introductory lesson after that free one-on-one -on -one introductory lesson, we then go through our four-step enrollment process to try and enroll them on a 12-month program. If there's any objection, we downsell them to a paid trial offer. We do two weeks for 29. So we want to track how many of those trials are we selling? How many appointments do we have on the book for the week? Are, you know, is there seven appointments? Are there 12 appointments? And then I want to look at the ratio of lead to appointment, appointment to show, show to close, because those ratios are going to let me know where my team is struggling. If, you know, we are only booking 20% of the leads that are coming in, I need to look at what that follow-up process looks like. Is my team contacting the leads within five minutes? I need to listen to what their phone skills are sounding like, Okay. So these numbers are going to let you know what you need to do next. We then start looking at number of renewals, upgrades. We always set a paid and full goal. And then we look at the breakdown of the revenue for special events, delinquencies, retail, mass intros, and then negative billing. In terms of our student count, we look at cancellations, active count, and total gross revenue. Now, these are the numbers that my program director is held responsible for. Then we have numbers that the chief instructor is held responsible for. And I want to know how many people were nominated. Were there any injuries that occurred? How many sniper chats did the team do? And then what was our day-to-day -day attendance on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? And when you're looking at the attendance from day-to-day, -day, it's going to help you to see which classes are you know most well attended 
And in some cases, maybe you have a class or a program that you're offering where the attendance is really low. So we know we need to aim our marketing efforts at that specific age group or skill level. Now, just to kind of ideate on other numbers that you can look at with your scorecard, you can look at 30-day active, right, which is maybe your student count, like I said earlier, is you have 200 students, but in the last 30 days, only 120 of them have walked through the door, okay? And, and that's a sign that, man, we need to be reaching out. We need to be doing missing in action calls. Maybe you want to look at the percentage of attrition on a weekly basis, or retention. So attrition is the percentage that you lose. Retention is the percentage that you keep. Maybe there's specific profit centers that you want to keep a pulse on. Maybe you want to look at private lesson money that's coming in, merchandise money that's coming in. Maybe your focus this quarter is, man, we've only got like 10 five-star Google reviews and we want that to be in the triple digits. So we want to focus on how many five-star Google reviews we're getting. And that's also something to consider when you're building your scorecard is if you had these, you know, year goals and these quarterly goals, what are the metrics that are going to tell us if we're getting closer or further away? And the benefit of looking at this on a weekly basis, like I said, when I kicked this off is what you focus on expands. And if you're trying to lower your attrition because your attrition is at 10%, then you need to be looking at that consistently. Okay. Maybe there's expenses that you want to be tracking on there. So these are over on the left-hand side, the exact scorecards that we, that this is our scorecard at Gracie Pack. And I wanted to give you um, some other ideas as well. Now let's talk about course correcting. So let's say a number is off track, which means it's red. Then we drop it down to the issues list on the agenda. And we're going to let everybody know we don't accept red. It's not just, yeah, this number is always red, so it's just going to stay red. No. If you have a number that's always red, it's because there's a lack of accountability. Oftentimes, the lack of accountability is due to, that, due to the fact that you didn't set expectations properly. So we're going to ask, why is this number off track? Maybe you're aiming for 20 leads and you're only at five leads this month. And you ask, why is it off track? And maybe the answer is because we got a new credit card and we haven't gotten the new credit card in, but Facebook paused our ads because we don't have a credit card on file. And that is a legitimate reason to maybe why the leads are off track. But how could we be a solution seeker if I own that and I need to fix it and maybe the card isn't coming for a few more days and we need to get ads up and running? Well, is there another card that we can use? Most business owners have multiple debit cards or credit cards. You can even connect PayPal to the Facebook ads manager. We're not just going to accept the fact that our credit card had fraud on it. We're waiting for the credit card company to send us a new one, and we're just not going to be able to run ads. That's an excuse. That's not being a solution seeker. And you got to let your team know that when they own that number, they are responsible for being a solution seeker because we win as a team and we lose as a team. Now, I think it's important to note that when you take a measurable that is off track and you drop it down to the issues list, that just because somebody is responsible, we're not pointing fingers, we're asking. We're not gonna say this number is off track, you're wrong, you did something wrong. We're just gonna ask, why is it off track? Okay, this is how you course correct. This is why we wait until the issues section of the meeting to dive into any of the data points that are off track so that we are in the mental headspace and capacity to have a discussion about why these numbers are off track and as a team, make a decision on how to get it off track. So let's use this example of leads aren't where they need to be. One of the reasons is because we had credit card fraud and our credit cards got shut down. And that was the credit card that was attached to the Facebook ad account. Okay, just a, a simple example for you. Well, in order to fix it, there's going to be a to do. There's going to be an action step that is going to have to occur. So we are going to assign that to do 
to the person that is responsible for the number. So if you're responsible for the leads, the action step is, hey, we have a backup credit card. Let's go ahead and get that on file so we can get the leads up and running. And now we have assigned that person a to-do, an action step. And you remember, when we get to the end of the meeting and we conclude, we review all those action steps. So everybody knows these are the items you are going to be held accountable for. And when you build this rhythm of accountability into your meetings, you are going to notice that a lot more things get done. Imagine that. So this is how you ultimately course correct when we drop a number down to the issues list. Um, let me share actually. So this is mine. So this is the platform we use. These are my to-dos. So we did our leadership level 10 on Tuesday. And in that meeting, there was one to-do for me. And that was for me to go through and create a VIP client list with our clients that um, are you know, considered VIP. They're the ones that have been with us the longest. Maybe they're JV partnerships. They uh, have multiple locations. So I know by next Tuesday, when I get into that meeting, I better have that list ready to rock and roll. Do you think I want to, in front of my team, tell them I didn't get the thing done that I committed to do? This is one of the best ways to build accountability into your meeting. So here are your next steps. Step number one, you got to identify and guys do this with your team. You're going to get such better buy-in if you do it with your team as opposed to you just saying, this is what we're doing. And honestly, you should have hired your team members because they are smart, amazing human beings. And doing this by yourself, you'd actually be worse off than doing it with them. So together as a group, identify what the key indicators are that will help you show success in the company. Then step number two, we refined your list. We're going to decide what are we keeping, what are we killing, and what are we combining. Step number three, we're going to measure. We're going to set the goals for each one of those items. Is it a number we're going after? Is it a dollar amount we're going after? Is it a percentage that we're going after? And we're going to decide what that number is, and then we're going to commit to it. And then step number four, we've got accountability. We're going to assign an owner to that specific number. Who is responsible for keeping it on track? And this is how you build your scorecard, okay? Like I said in the beginning, I, I've done a lot of different meeting agendas and I just haven't found one that's better than this. And if I do eventually find one that is better than this, I will let you know. For those of you that are maybe one man or one woman shows or, you know, you have a... Um, you know, small team, like even if it's just a team of one, you should be going through this process with yourself because when you start developing a team, this is the process you're going to want to go with them. Okay. So we got a few minutes. Any questions on the scorecard process or the level 10 process, running meetings, anything on this specific, and then I can open it up to anything else. You can drop it in the chat or just unmute. Going once, going twice. All right. I guess that means I explained it pretty well. Like we said earlier, is part of the numbers uniforms? It can be. Yeah. So if you wanted to uh, implement inventory in there, um, our inventory we do on a monthly basis. We have that time blocked out. Uh, so we don't look at uniform numbers on a weekly basis, but maybe that's a number that's really important for you um, or retail items like who is in charge of ordering. Yeah, so our inventory is done on a complete, like we have a specific day for inventory. It's the first Wednesday of the month. But again, what's important to you might not be important to me and vice versa. So if you want to have a closer eye because maybe you're having inventory issues, like our system that we have in place isn't 
the the feedback we're getting is that there's not an issue there. So it's not a number we're looking at on a weekly basis, but you absolutely could. Okay, great question, sir. Um, let's see. Great webinar. I love the concept of everything is a team effort. 100% thumbs up. It's great to review what I'm currently doing, refine and improve. Awesome. What was the quote at the start again? Yes, that is good. If you're lost, the answer is education. If you're educated, the answer is execution. If you're executing, the answer is consistency. I'll have a post on this next week because it really resonated with me. All right, guys. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. If you're tracking leads, how do you recommend getting the most accurate number when you have multiple systems giving you leads? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question. Um, so we do an end of day report. So my team is responsible. The instructor team and the program director team is responsible for sending an end of day report in the end of day report. We are tracking all of those things, um, such as which leads are from GrowPro, which leads are from market muscles, which leads are from walk-ins and what they do is from that end of day report, we use Slack as a communication platform. So they post it in Slack. You could have them email it to you. You could have them text mess text it to you is that they take all of those EODs and then they're just going to add all the numbers up and we plug it in to our platform. So prior to using EOS one, we just used the spreadsheet and my team was responsible for entering those numbers in at the end of day. I highly suggest if you're not doing some form of an end of day recap, you do that. Um, our program director and chief instructor is responsible for sending that end of day report. For me, this was something that was really important when I decided to become an off-site owner um, because I wasn't there, you know, on, on like at the school during prime time. So how am I supposed to keep a pulse, um, you know, on the school? they would send that end of day report. Um, if you just want them to plug it directly into a spreadsheet, I would. What I would not suggest is just fully utilizing your CRM. Imagine this, tech isn't always 100% accurate. So in the spreadsheet for tracking, you could have you know number of GrowPro leads, number of market muscle leads, number of walk-ins. If you want to separate referral leads, you can do that as well. Great question. Will there be a replay? And when? Always, sir. Uh, my marketing director, Emily, is really, really fast. She'll have this up before the end of day today. So it'll be an email. And then you'll also get access to the keynote. Okay. All right, guys. Um, Chris, everything's always great that you present to us. We implemented the new student welcome kit. It's been a massive hit. Awesome. Love to hear. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks for sharing. Okay. I hope everybody has a beautiful rest of their Thursday. If you need me, send me a Facebook message. Send me an email, midgettwister at gmail.com. And I'll talk to everybody soon. Make it a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.